Hey guys, today's the day we're going to start uh, framing up the load bearing wall. We got a delivery from Lowe's yesterday of two by sixes. And of course they were five short. So I had to drive an hour and a half to pick up more lumber. Anyways, it is what it is. We've got all our materials here and we're going to be framing in a two by six load bearing wall. We have not yet figured out where the doors are going to be exactly. I'm leaving that up to Yvonne. But what I can do is get the first top plate installed on the trusses. This load bearing wall is going to have two top plates in order to help distribute the weight evenly among the trusses. And what we're going to do is, or what I'm going to do is put the first top plate up. We're then going to frame up the rest of the wall on the floor and then move it into place and then secure it to this top plate and to the deck. In order to secure this 2x6 to the trusses, I'm using some quick clamps and 3 inch screws. I'll come back later and secure the 2x6 to each truss using 3.5 inch framing nails and my nail gun. Now that the 2x6 has been secured, Yvonne and I are using a plumb bob to determine the location of the base plate. We're going along the 2x6, dropping the plumb bob about every 24 to 36 inches. Yvonne's making a mark on the floor, so we'll have a nice plumb line between our base plate and our top plates. This is how we roll at upside and downsizing. We are designing the bedroom and bathroom layout right now. We always had the walls kind of figured out, but now here's what we've done. We have two barn doors that we found a great deal on, and the orange two by fours represent the openings in the bathroom and the bedroom. The barn doors will be hanging here on the outside. These openings are 32 inches wide. The door itself is 36, so there'll be a two inch overlap on either side. And we have that for the bathroom and for the bedroom. And what you see down here is where a full length uh, closet is going to be that is approximately 30 inches, I would guess 24 inches wide, 26 inches wide, and that's going to go from here to those two studs. So that's going to be the layout. The one thing we haven't figured out yet is this is our utility closet. It's going to go come to this first vertical, and then that's where the hot water heater and electrical panel is going to be uh, housed. And then this wall, of course, comes across. So this will be our little atrium, our little entryway, foyer, whatever you want to call it, as you walk in the house. Pretty cool. 
Now that we've got that determined, I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to build this wall on the floor or if I'm going to put a second top plate up and then cut each individual stud and make sure that I have studs that are vertical and friction fitting the whole way down. So in, in order to assure that we have this base plate screwed down to the floor joist, what Yvonne's doing is she's cutting up this uh, underlayment and she's going to remove it from underneath this, the uh, base plate. That way we can see where the floor joists are and we can screw it into the floor joists. We also have to now, we have our layout on the board. And I know, I know a few minutes ago I said I was going to build the wall and then stand it up, but I've decided what we're going to do is we're going to put the studs in place. We have the second top plate screwed down. As you saw, in we used a plumb bob to determine the location of the base plate. And after this is all cut up, we'll cut out the location for the doors. So we have a cut here and a cut here. And then we'll have a king and a jack stud on both sides and a header above. Same thing down here for the bathroom door. Even though we used a plumb bob, putting up that first stud always gives you a little bit of worry. Is everything going to be plumb in both directions? And it was. We have our layout on the base plate, 16 inches on center. After we measure and cut the stud to length, we place it on its mark on the base plate and secure it with the framing nailer. Then we'll make sure that it's plumb and then use the framing nailer as well as three inch screws uh, to secure it to the top. The screws are able to go right through the double top plate. Here we're installing our first king stud. After we get that secured in place, we measure the height that we need for the door opening, which is 82 inches, and we secure the jack stud directly to the king stud. And now it's time for the other side of the door opening. We do the same process. First, we install the king stud and then an 82 inch jack stud. We'll do the header later. That's it for today. We've got several studs. We have the first door uh, king and jack studs installed. 
and we'll finish this wall up tomorrow. Before we get started with day two of framing in this load-bearing wall, I just want to give you a, a look around. We quit last night around 4.30 and just kind of left everything just the way it was. But this is a chance also before Yvonne gets back to show you what we did with this south-facing wall. After our last video, we came in and we put in vertical supports in the south-facing wall, starting in the corner. And these are two by sixes, again, that were uh, channeled out, put in to be secured to the box beam as well as the toe up. And we have them here between the windows. And then we have a vertical here. Now, we have then one in the corner as well. Between this vertical and the corner, we have four two-by-four supports that have also been installed. And this whole wall area is going to be covered in plywood because this is going to be where our kitchen island, cabinets, open shelving, uh, that's all going to be there. And we want to have the flexibility to not only put shelving and upper cabinets where we want without being concerned uh, about where the supports are located, but we also want to have a flat surface so that if I want to tile a backsplash, for example, uh, I can do that without an issue. And I'm a tile guy. I like doing tile. I've done a lot of tile, floors, walls, backsplashes, and I enjoy doing it. So I've got some pretty good ideas about what we want to do with the kitchen. Now, you'll see that there's also bracing that runs around the corner here. And this is going to be the location of our kitchen sink. And the walls above that two by four are going to be earth and plaster. Below it, there's going to be a full width countertop with a kitchen sink built in. And also then probably about eight inches of uh, tile backsplash uh, behind the sink. So we got that done. And that completed the southern wall. Then over here back on the northern wall, and I'm sorry this is going to be a little difficult to see, but I'll try to get you in here behind these French doors. You'll see that we also installed two horizontal braces here as well. This whole area is designated for an office, kind of a workspace area for Yvonne to do her macrame or for when we need to do a video editing. And we want to have supports on the wall so that we can put in shelving or whatever we might need to make that workspace more functional for us. So we've got that installed as well. There was a comment in the last video where someone suggested putting in blocking above the vertical braces between the box beam and the trusses to prevent twisting. And I don't know why, but that kind of struck me as a good idea. So I had some extra four by six laying around and I cut blocks of four by six and wedged them in between the box beam and the trusses. And then I used eight inch structural screws and screwed down through the truss, through the four by six blocking into the box beam. I was just kind of killing time and thought, well, you know what? It might be a good idea. Couldn't hurt. So we did that. And then we started with the framing that you saw yesterday. So as soon as Yvonne gets back, we're going to finish framing up this wall. I'm standing outside the house on the eastern exposure. And I just want to give you an idea of where the location of that load-bearing wall is compared to the center beam going through the decking. You can see the center beam right here. And I'm going to get under the house so you can see where it, what it looks like. So you can see a double 2 by 10 running the length of the house. So that the weight of the roof, if there's any weight of the roof on the load-bearing wall, will be transferred right down to that center beam and to the center posts. Yeah. 
Here you can see me toying with the idea of doing the header as a 2x6 vertical. The problem was it didn't quite reach the double top plate, and so I opted to go a double 2x6 horizontal and then put a cripple in. Okay, that brings this video to an end. We want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support and comments. As you can see over here, we've continued framing, and these are the walls for our bathroom. And we're going to frame that with two by six material. And I want to give a thank you and a shout out to our friends in North Dakota, Building Roots, for reminding us that uh, when you're framing a bathroom, you're going to need a little extra room in the wall cavity if you're going to do your plumbing inside those walls. And thanks, Teresa and Wiley. We appreciate it. I'll leave a link to Building Roots' YouTube channel in the description below. They're doing a fantastic job with a timber frame straw bale home in North Dakota. Check them out. After we're finished framing up the interior walls, the next big step is going to be spray foam. We've contracted a company to come in and spray foam our roof. That'll be this coming Friday, so we'll have to get the place cleaned out and prepped for it. And I want to give a shout out now to Don over at Affordable Desert Living. Uh, he used the same company for his spray foam installation. And thanks to his video and his review, we contacted the company and hopefully we'll have just as good a results as did Don. Thanks again, Don. I'll leave a link to uh, Affordable Desert Living in the description box below. That's it for today's video, guys. Thanks again. We appreciate all the support. Leave any questions or comments in the comment box below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. We'll see you in the next video.